I really do. I love, I love that you've all come out and thank you. And well, I think Kerry just told everybody it's National Goats Day today. So in honor of that, I want to tell you the story of three Billy Goats McGraw. Mm. Now this version was inspired by my dear friend Cora Moore who has a beautiful goat therapy farm called Fairylands in Tennessee. And also the inspiration came from her goats and all the magical beings that live at Fairylands. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> did you create all this, Cora? How were you up for the task? Well, I had a wild imagination, and I didn't really ask. You didn't ask people what you should do? No, I just went with my heart to what I felt was true. Sure, I had teachers along the way, and some had some really interesting and inspiring stuff to say. The outside and the animals taught me most as a child, to roam with my soul and stay beguiled, enchanted and in wonder at the things I saw. And that's how Fairyland Farm was born. Through the eyes of young Cora, a magic oath was sworn that all beings on this land could be themselves, be who they were, not become anything else that anyone else would prefer. And they became it together as time went along, and it all began with Cora's song. Cora, Cora, where do you go? Cora, Cora, when the winds do blow, does the spirit call you through your heart to a fairyland farm where you play your part and the goats are free? And breath runs through the wind All creatures love consciously And the world is softening Cora, Cora, where do you go When your mama is a-quilting And your sisters don't know? Cora, Cora, do you put up a fight? You're an Aries girl with a burning light And your heart is free and your words are kind. And here there is a goat's decree. They declare, they decree, this is Cora's time. Once upon a time, there lived three little goats, Happiness, Chocolat, and Patience McGruff. These little goats, they love to eat. They love to eat grass, they love to Plants, they love to eat trees. They love to eat anything, basically, that they could get in their mouths. But most of all, these little goats, they love to play. And they would play all day in their meadow. One day, the little goats decided that they wanted to forage for food on the other side of the river. So they looked for a place to cross. And they came upon an old stone bridge. exclaimed the smallest of the little goats, a little black and brown Spanish goat called Chocolat, as she jumped and she pretended to headbutt the air. Mommy, mommy, yes we can cross there, said the pure Webernite goat called Happiness. And there's lots of green stuff over there, and I love, love, love <laughs> green stuff, she squealed as she and Chocolat played and rammed each other as they ran towards the bridge. Hold up, you two, bleated the herd queen, a small brown, grey and white goat named Patience. We must be cautious. We must make sure that the bridge is not occupied by the troll. Ugh, protested, happiness wriggling her little nose in the air. I hate trolls. Well, I'm not afraid of some stinky old troll, boasted Chocolat, puffing herself up to look as big and fluffy as she possibly could. <laughs> Even so, said Patience, we must be discerning, we must be wise. Let's slowly 
graze our way over there. Shall we? Mummy! Mum! The other two exclaimed and ran towards Patience, headbutting and playing with her. The little goats ran down into the meadow, around the bridge, eating leaves and weeds along the way. A little happiness in our step, a little chocolate beside it, a little chocolate for our taste, a little happiness not to hide it. Hop and a skip and a skinny dip, a stream full of fish who shimmy and flip, a river running down to the Mississippi, and the troll ran under the bridge. Today turns to tomorrow. A hop and a skip and a skinny dip. A stream full of fish who shimmy and flip. A river running down to the Mississippi. And a troll rod under the bridge. What the little goats did not know, however, that this bridge was the home of an old troll named Ignatius. Ignatius Troll liked to eat goats, <laughs> baby goats. Well, he liked to eat any goats, really. He would sit under his bridge all day, eating dead fish and waiting for a plump little goat to cross. As he sat under his bridge, covered in moss and smelling of dead fish, oof, he heard mawing off in the distance. Ignatius Troll stood up. He peeked out from under his bridge, and he burped. <laughs> ma, ma, ma! He started imitating the goats. Those goats, they drive me crazy! Always so happy all the time, calling for their ma! With their cute little horns and their little waggly tails and their cute little hooves. I don't like any of them! and he threw his discarded fish on the ground, spat, farted, as trolls are prone to do, and stomped his feet. I have a pile of rotting fish stashed away, and I'm not keeping them for no rainy day. I just like them like that. Yes, I just like them like that. My teeth are yellow, and my breath is nasty. I don't like the sun, so my skin's all pasty. And I like it like that. Yes, I like it like that. But you, McGruffs, ain't no joke. And I'm not going to let you get my goat, because I'm going to eat you up, because I'm a troll. The mine in the distance was growing louder. Ignatius Troll tucked back under his bridge, shuffling softly. <laughs> and the goats came running down the meadow towards the bridge. A little happiness in our step, a little chocolate beside it. A little chocolate for a taste, a little happiness not to hide it. They paused for a minute to inspect some rabbits and a butterfly before running sideways towards the river to take a drink. A hop and a skip and a skinny dip, a stream full of fish and a stream full of dip. A hop and a skip and a skinny dip, a stream full of fish who shimmy and flip, a river running down to the Mississippi. And a troll ride under the bridge. Once them goats get to my bridge, I'll climb up. I'll grab them and I'll put them on my roaster for the fire. The old troll plotted and laughed to himself wickedly. <laughs> Once you four leggeds come a looming, me and my bro Echo voices start booming. And we like it like that. <laughs> yes, we like it like that. But you, McGruffs, ain't no joke. And I'm. Not gonna let you get my goat, cause I'm gonna eat you up, cause I'm a troll.
what Ignatius Troll did not know was that the Blue Fairy, who was the guardian fairy of Cora's entire estate of Fairylands, was on her way back from visiting her sister in wine country. Well, to be exact, the very exclusive Elderberry Groves. She was floating down the river, over some stones, talking to the minnows, sipping from her sister's delicious elderberry wine. A yearly tradition never to be missed by any good fairy, <laughs> especially the blue fairy. Hello! <laughs> she said with a hiccup. <laughs> Hello! She said even louder, looking behind her and in front of her and to both sides of her. Hello! <laughs> she said even louder into a passing breeze. Dear, oh dear, where are those fish? She sat down on the edge of the stream and she dipped her toes into the cool water. She took another sip of her sister's delicious wine. She did love her wine. And after a few seconds, she felt a slight nibbling on her toes. <laughs> Silly old me. Silly old me and me old brain. The fish are in the water. She bent down more like fell. So close to the water that the tip of her nose touched it. And she beamed with the most beautiful smile that lit up her entire face. So proud that she had found her fish and not entirely fallen in. She threw back her head and she started to sing. Sitting by the water's edge, the fish nibbling my toes. Exfoliate, exfoliate, <laughs> it's more fun than you suppose. <laughs> I'm the blue fairy, I'm the blue fairy, tippledy toppledy too. Wending my way down the stream to come and play with you. Flitting and flying over the stream, hope the fish are having fun. Skimming the stones, all kind of trying. Okay, I'm good, I'm done. I'm the blue fairy, I'm the blue fairy, tipple tee topple tee too. With an earful of toffee, I'd rather a coffee, but tell me, what can I do? I'm the blue fairy, I'm the blue fairy, tipple dee topple dee too. With three goats and a troll and a fairy land soul, I'm tipple dee topple dee too. A little voice said, coming close to her, the little rabbit jumped onto the blue fairy's lap, panting and shaking. There, there, little Toffee. Why are you so scared? Oh, the troll and the gods and eating green stuff in the bridge. The little rabbit started excitably and in a hurry, as little rabbits are always excitable. And a little more tricksy than goats. The blue fairy sat up. She put the little bunny back down on the ground. All right, Toffee. One thought at a time, please. The troll is going to eat the baby goat's McGluff. The little rabbit exclaimed dramatically and fell over on his back. He was very, very melodramatic. The, 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 the troll is going to eat the baby goat McGruff? Well, that will not do. Ignatius Troll knows full well he's not allowed to eat the goats. I know. He likes to eat we rabbits too. <laughs> Ignatius Troll is going to eat you too? Well, let's get a move on, shall we? We're going to have a talk with that Mr. Ignatius Troll. You lead the way, Toffee. Lead the way. Tired from all their play, the goats had stopped to take a rest under the shade of some tall oak trees, happily chewing their cud and letting off flies 
totally unaware that the old troll was gathering firewood <laughs> for his fire pit and skewer. I live with my bro Echo down here in the dark with his dead friend the gecko. He doesn't need no walk in the park. And we like it like that. Yes, we <laughs> like it like that. He happily riffed to himself as he right. lit his fire. The only reason to come out in the sun where my heart beats to a different drum is when the blue fairy comes along. Cause she is the one. Yes, she is the one. And I like her like that. Yes, I like her like that. <laughs> the, these goats, they're gonna be good eating. <laughs> <laughs> so now to find some good goaty treats, he thought to himself as he tramped off through the wood looking for good goaty treats like hawthorn, honeysuckle and wild berries. I'll gather it all up. I'll place it on the other side of the bridge and wait for those goats to come over. <laughs> <laughs> the blue fairy is coming! The blue fairy is coming! The blue fairy is coming! He had an excitable little voice proclaim. She's the blue fairy, she's the blue fairy, tipple topple too. She's the blue fairy, she's the blue fairy, and she's coming to get you. The troll immediately dropped his bag of treats and screamed. What? 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 The, 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 the blue fairy is <laughs> coming here. He stuttered, pressing himself and smoothing himself all over, shooing Toffee Rabbit away as the little rabbit was now at the troll's feet, hopping all around, talking and chatting on and on and on about the blue fairy. Get out of here! You're bugging me! You're gonna make me look bad in front of the blue fairy. And I love the blue fairy. Oh, I gotta look me best. And he started to comb his hair and check his breath. <laughs> you said you're going to eat the baby goat's McGruff. What, who, me? The troll said indignantly, shooting a scowl at the rabbit. Get out of here. You're gonna make me look bad in front of the blue fairy. I've got a thing for my blue fairy. She's the only one I talk to because she doesn't find me scary. And I like her like that. Yes, I like her like that. But you, bunny, ain't no joke. And I'm going to toss you in my stinky old cloak. And then I'm going to eat you up because I'm a troll. Uh. I'll tell on you. No, you don't, hissed the troll. And he tossed his stinky old cloak over the rabbit, drew a bag from his back pocket, and he threw Toffee Rabbit in. Toffee Rabbit was now trapped inside the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I got myself some sticky dessert. <laughs> <laughs> he gathered up his rubbish, he threw the sack over his shoulder, and he bounced off towards his fire. He set his trap just in time to hide as the goats came running down towards the bridge. A little happiness, he lost up a little chocolate beside him. A little chocolate, for I taste a little happiness, not to hide it. I don't smell any trolls, said the goat crunching her little nose up in the air and sniffing the air. I smell cheese! <laughs> Chocolat said and ran towards the trap that the troll had set, happiness close behind her. Cheats, cheats, cheats! They chirped and they jumped on the pile and fell deep down into the hole that the troll had dug underneath. Ma! Ma! They cried out in surprise. Patience, the little herd queen, she had witnessed the whole scene. And as she scrambled away, she called back to the two little goats, I will go and look for the blue fairy. And when I can find her, I will bring her back as soon as I can. And she scrambled up the rocks and up the stream. 
not seeing that the troll had just appeared. Ignatius! He heard a sharp, motherly voice calling. Ignatius Troll! Is that you? approached, smiling, knowingly. I'm the blue fairy, I'm the blue fairy, tipple ti topple ti too. I'm the blue fairy, I'm the blue fairy, and I've come to talk with you. The old troll blushed and smiled coyly and kicked his feet in the dirt. Ignatius, have you been behaving yourself? Well, eat me? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm always on my best behaviour, Blue Fairy. And my eye, hey, Blue Fairy, you look lovelier than ever. What you doing? Visiting an humble old troll like me that just hides under his bridge eating his dead fish, minding me own business, <laughs> bothering no one? <laughs> The blue fairy simply gave him the look. I am going to have a little look for myself, Ignatius, in that oh. beautifully crafted oh. and masterfully hidden trap over oh. there. <laughs> and when I come back, we may or we may not be discussing the matter further. <laughs> no! Blue fairy, I would never lie to you! I love all those little goats. I love every single hair on their heads. I love all the forest critters. And he bent down to throat Toffee Rabbit. Toffee Rabbit bit his finger. Sounds there right! And the little bunny ran off. Oh, don't go worrying your pretty little lead over me, Blue Fairy. I like me dead fish. The Blue Fairy simply turned her back and with her very last dignified hiccup <laughs> she made her way towards the hole that the goats were so cleverly trapped in knowing full well that ignatius troll would have to make his escape oh stinking fish oh stinking fish I just lost my privilege to live under this here lovely bridge. Cause the blue fairy told me so. I could hang my head for all that I have done. But I'm an old school troll and that wouldn't be much fun. So it's tuck your head in, roll up in a ball. <laughs> no, I'm not sorry, not sorry at all. I lost my love, I lost my own. But there's one thing I do know, being a troll. There's more possibilities in life than one. So it's tuck your head in, roll up in a ball. No, I'm not sorry, not sorry at all. I lost my love, I lost my home, but there's one thing I do know, being a troll, there's more possibilities in life than one. At that very moment, Cora was walking back down through the meadow to catch the last glimpse of a very fat little ball rolling rapidly away over the rocks <laughs> and down the stream. Cora helped the two little goats out of the dark, deep troll hole and back into the sunshine. And the little goats bleated in joy to be reunited and sang and danced around the meadow. A little happiness in a step, a little shock of love beside it. A little shock of love for a taste, a little happiness not to hide it. A hop and a skip and a skinny dip. A stream full of fish, you shimmy and flip. A re 
river running down to the Mississippi. And no troll hiding under the bridge. No, no troll hiding under the bridge. <laughs> the bunny and the blue fairy took hold of Cora's hand and they danced homeward through the dust-lit meadow. They dined on honeysuckle, wild berries and sweet potato pie, and of course, a glass of the finest elderberry wine. They laughed and they made merry as they regaled their adventure of the day. Cora lives on Fairyland Farm with her goats, a Tennessee heart for for them fine home folks. They're fun, they're fiery, they're curious as to what's going on. They're friendly, their eyes a little starry. So bring your bags to Baxter where the goats have got it going on. <laughs> you bring the goats to folks who are curious about what a goat can do for the human race. Their lineage is long, their medicine is strong. Goats have held the secret test of time. Their tenacity takes hold of us, makes the way for all of us through the ups and downs of life. So whisper quietly, let it catch the wind. <laughs> the goats are listening to the song you sing. So cry it bravely into the ancient fires. The goats are nomads, they hear your desires. So tell me, dear ones, will you come this way to fall like a Tennessee girl? Ha, 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 ha.